Hello, welcome to the CES meeting. Uh, we had a festive TC39 meeting last week where Realms advanced to stage three. Um, the only remaining, uh, as that it was, how does it say? They liked everything but the color. Um, so we have uh, placed on our agenda um, the, the uh, conversation about what should we even call realms, um, and what's uh, to, to play some play some name name guessing game theory, um, and also uh, I think that that's that's it. Does anybody have anything that they wish to propose we add to our agenda? I have a, uh, just a sort of a, a accounting and administrative item that is realms related um, that would take me less than 60 seconds. All right, well, let's just do that now while we remember. Cool, um, great. Well, let me pick this up so I'm not looking down like a weirdo. Uh, I'm really pleased to say that um, through a concerted uh, preemptive effort, uh, there is a pull request open with a substantial set of tests for the current specification of callable boundary realms. Uh, for, for both the evaluate and uh, <coughs> import value uh, behaviors. Um, so it's I actually used it to implement two full polyfills, one of which is under review in the Realms polyfill uh, repo that uh, I have made such that it works in uh, JavaScript core, SpiderMonkey, and V8 so far. Um, and I used uh, the tests to implement that. So as soon as uh, R plus from one more person, um, I'm hoping uh, that Mike Panisi will take a look and shepherd that through the tests. Folks can start working on their own implementations as well. Done. Excellent. Um, yeah, that just leaves, uh, so that just leaves 50 minutes to talk about names. <laughs> Leo, Sorry, would you like so to, time. Leo, would you like to talk uh, to to shepherd a conversation about what color we want our realm shed to be to look like? Well, um, so that that's fun. Uh, yesterday, I received a visit from uh, John David Dalton, who works with uh, in my team, like Rick and I. Uh, same team of Brick. And uh, we were talking about the names. Um, and uh, he explained, like, with many reasons, satisfactory uh, reasons for using multiverse and call or just calling it verse. Um, I still have. Uh, 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 some issues on using it verse because some somehow I want verse to be something as multi-threaded or uh, like the idea of having multiverse. Uh, oh yeah, and also have shades of fly, Firefly. Uh, but to be fairly honest, there is no reason for me uh, to really rename realms because like we've been working on this for seven years. It's not never been an, an actual problem having realms as a, as a name. I think there might be implementation concerns and that's why I'm, I'm actually uh, still not uh, shutting that down. And I respect that, like that we have uh, some of the implementation challenges or specs integration. Um, but like for end users, uh, realms is just fine. Um, Jordan had one comment that I think is uh, fair, uh, is that if you search for realms right now, um, you end up finding information about um, array, uh, not ma array that is array and, 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 and not being able to check the instance of uh, cross realm uh, with iframes, which obviously wouldn't be a problem uh, with this because you don't get an object. Um, so... In a, in a future possible extension of this, that still will be true. 
I agree. I agree that if you want to plan for future extensions where there is an option bag where that, that allows it, yes. Which which I think makes a, a good case for keeping a realm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, There's also the, the, the thing that you have, uh, you have realms, but also like if you use bubble and on the internet, especially if you have like, if you name it bubble and you, uh, let's say you need to handle events inside the bubble. So you have bubble events. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, th I think that actually in, the, in this room, I don't think that anybody wants to rename it. So this is not a conversation about, this isn't a conversation about better, better names than Realm. This is a conversation about worse names than Realm that are more likely to succeed. I see a hand for oh, I want to jump in as a member of the totally group. Agree. So, uh, you know, I think when we, when we adapted callable boundaries, it was a really significant change from what we've been calling Realms. Uh, that was a thing that was raised in committee and it's, and it's true. Uh, Leo characterized the concerns as implement, implementer concerns or implementation concerns. They're not concerns from an implementation perspective. Naming doesn't have non-trivial implementation implications. They're design concerns that web browser authors have raised. And I think they're legitimate. I think it's legitimate to say that this proposal by having this kind of boundary differs from what a pretty small group of people who maybe we don't have to care about too much, we're, we're thinking about realms for, for a long time. They differ from what the same origin iframe semantics are and a certain small group of specialists might use the word realm to, to refer to that. Uh, and I don't really agree with the weighting, but it's a, you know, but this is a legitimate design concern. And I think, uh, you know, if we want to make I guess, but I guess we're all on the same page that, you know, if we want to make this reality, we just have to kind of take the, take the concern kind of seriously and agree on something that's, that's in alignment with it. You, you yeah. can, uh, sorry, I was gonna say, I think, sorry, Leo, I think we can take it seriously and put in a good faith effort as, as we have been and engaging on that thread on GitHub. And we have said out loud pros and cons about other naming here, and we can certainly continue to do so. But I think that it's not entirely unreasonable if at the end of the day, our the result of our conversation, which is being recorded and will be public and can be reviewable by our peers, for them to see that we did, in fact, uh, put the, the, the topic to discussion. We didn't make jokes. We didn't, you know, blame, play the, the blame game. But at the end of the day, uh, tasks and jobs was like a big uh, sticking point years ago and that didn't get changed and everybody is still alive and still productive uh, and this out the the uh, 262 still talks about jobs and the web and HTML still talks about tasks and they still manage to be productive and effective um, and I don't think that the callable boundary change is really that drastic of a difference. I think it's a super interesting and novel concept, but at the end of the day, that is still um, a evaluate, just takes a string and evaluates it, uh, that code in, uh, in a fresh global context, just as a realm always would. The only difference now is we don't have a dot global property and we can't pass in endowments yet, yet. So go ahead, uh, just, just want to uh, highlight a, a few bullets. Uh, first, one of them. We, uh, uh, it's easy for me to assume that I, I don't have any specific problem with the names, or that I, it's really like it's not part of my goals finding a new name. I am like uh, participating on that conversation in order to be like participating in good faith, like to help people. In, in, it's more like a sport, but it's not my goal, my personal goal, uh, finding a new name for Realm, because I am okay uh, if the name remains Realm. And in, in the same sense, that's the other bullet, I'm okay with whatever name. Uh, reality, I want a feature, uh, but I don't care too much about the name. 
as like in order to like it's nothing like super precious for me of course we can take advantage if the name is easy to be searchable on the web and not cause confusions um i don't think no name will actually be intuitive saying like well this is what you can do just figuring out like by a single name or double uh, double name uh constructor you're never going to figure out that just by the name you need to uh, take a look and see what it does and how it does um so i don't mind if we get if we call it realms or if we call it anything else uh of course we we, we need not to like name it smoosh uh on the way but we we need to find a name that just works I am doing this in support. And of course, like, I think this uh, conversation about the names should always take, uh, have, it's always free to have a tone that like, it's not super serious. Like uh, if we talk about a name that we find like, let's say bubble, a lot of people like the name. And I think one of the reasons people might like the name, this is just a guess, it's because it's cute. Uh, in in some sense, like yeah, bubble calling it bubble is cute. I don't, I, but I don't see like much value uh, being achieved by calling it like realm versus bubble. It's just like I'm there in sport, but like uh, having a, a, a how do I say a funny tone. Uh, it doesn't make like it. it should not also mean like we are making fun of the, the problem, but also like we are being in a good, uh, in a good sport, in a good spirit to, to move this forward. And we are, I, I'm still celebrating uh, that we got <laughs> stage three. Uh, I'm still like in a very um, enthusiastic uh, mood because seeing the next steps for stage four are the best part. When you proposed the name Acrylic Glove Box, until you explained what you meant by it, I thought it was a joke, and I apologize for receiving it as if it were a joke. <laughs> um, but uh, it, yeah, and I and I and I took the picture um, that you sent and sh showed it to my wife, who worked in science for a long time, and asked her what it was called, <laughs> and she's like, "Ah." <laughs> it's <laughs> lab box is another word I found for it. The unfortunate thing is that that physical item that exists in our world is the is absolutely the closest analog to the thing that we've <laughs> created here, uh, like visually, mentally, in every way possible. But what the hell is it called? Give give us a a nice name for that thing that isn't glove box because that's definitely the place in my car where i put the registration uh mm -hmm. and and the vehicle manual <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, uh, I, and, I and let, in let me bring my sorry just to finish uh, uh something a uh, note about the box uh i bring my english as a second language card here where uh jgd actually told me like we should not in uh, we should we should avoid our best to name anything as box because of all the connotations of these words so yeah uh, i've been informed and I, i'm definitely gonna I'm not gonna advocate for anything that looks like glove box or any derivation of that it's unfortunate we have a thing that yes physically is analogous but can, yeah. can i ask what if people have particular concerns with bubble given that it did get a bunch of kind of energy on the issue doesn't a bubble is not what this thing creates you can't you can't if you try to enter a bubble it will pop if you try to enter from the outside if you try to if something inside a bubble tries to reach through the bubble it will pop how does the bubble how does bubble describe this thing at all i don't have many cons about also, bubble but i do have ridiculous. <laughs> sorry i, I do have I, uh, the only thing that I have for bubble is like the confusion of bubble events and for all the other things we use for bubble on the web language, on the you web have, jargon. You should, you should definitely uh, add that because I didn't think of it and you're entirely right. It, it, it will bring to confusion on the web. 
I, I think it's non-descriptive. And if you think about, you know, the hierarchy of virtual machine and things like that, you don't find bubble anywhere where containment right. realm, um, you know, container, those are all, you know, commonly used terms in, in the state of the art. And so, you know, bubbles, yeah, it's a joke. And, you know, I agree with Rick, you pop it, <laughs> but you're, you're not yeah. putting something there, you're protecting. Yeah. yeah. And Rick, I think you should suggested a global execution environment or something like that. Global, global execution context. Context. Um, so when you put new in front of it, it's actually a sentence that makes sense. New yeah. global execution context. But to me, it's not clear uh, if that couldn't apply also to the concept of compartments. Uh, I'm not um, even here to defend it. I'm, I, I, that sub that description came to my mind literally while I was writing tests and reading the spec pros over and over and over again. And I was like, oh yeah, this is a global object with an execution context. So I just threw it in there. Um, but again, at the end of the day, it's a realm maker. I see Alex's hand. Have, yeah. Yes, I just wanted to make a quick observation if I may. Um, I'm thinking about this in terms of, well, actually in mathematical terms. Um, if we're gonna come up with a new name for realm, I would strongly suggest we stick to something that has a mathematical meaning behind it. Maps and sets follow the, that rule pretty well. The de definition of a map mathematically is pretty clear. Ditto for set. Um, and in computer programming, we could call it effectively namespaces. I'm not saying we should. I'm just throwing it out there as a as a consideration. Um, but if you want to if you want to use a name, I think having it that where it's based at least somewhat in mathematics definitions or computer science definitions might be helpful. And oh my God, Leo just said something that actually back, chan back channel me something that actually makes a lot of sense. I'm not gonna, Leo, you have to say it. No, uh, I, I, I was just kidding for, I don't think there's a, this can be taken seriously, but I say the feral uh, realm Ephemeral realm. Yeah. Uh, a, a point I made in the chat was that naming realm right now is kind of a funny thing to do because it's going to exist within a system of names. Um, if, if provided that this group succeeds, there will eventually be constructors for things that are like workers in. Uh, and there will be a constructor for things that are like compartments and you're it's like one, they, they are and contain the others, depending on, you know, like, like their layers. Um, and uh, it would be nice to come up with a set of names that where the, where the names make sense together. Um, and uh, which isn't, which, which might actually depending on what system of names we find that actually works for the three concepts, um, uh, it might make sense for realm to stay realm if we can find names for, better names for agent and compartment that fit the theme. Um, uh, and, and we need to come up with a better name than agent because agent is a terrible name. Uh, <laughs> um, so or, I would... Pardon. It's an excellent name that refers to something entirely different. So I was suggesting that we could talk about arenas where that's preceded by like what it's an arena of. So a realm could be a callable boundary realm could be like an object arena and then a compartment or at least the maybe the subset of compartments that's about module loading could be like a module arena and then uh, maybe, maybe that would be like a unifying way. I'm not sure how agent object would arena, into this. Yeah, object arena is sort of misleading because the, the, the realms as we have designed them so far disallow the passing of objects back and forth. So it'd be, I mean, you could make, you could say like, yeah, but you have all the objects inside it. It is indeed an arena filled with objects. I won't disagree with that but i think folks would find it surprising that like a thing that's referring to objects can't actually talk in objects 
Um, yeah, maybe the word arena is wrong, but having a common suffix, like we could call you mean, it object you mean space object. And, and module space. If we want to, if we want to have compartments be under a similar naming scheme, so space is a is a math word. If we want map and set or math words, space is like a, you know, you have like vector spaces or in general different kinds of algebraic spaces that where you have you know values and operator operations on the values and they're all like closed inside of the space. Maybe space is the is something that kind of describes these kinds of concepts. What? Hold on a second. What about capital G global? Or merely globe for that matter. Well, I, I actually want to get back to a little bit the relation between compartment uh, realm and agent. M the way I see it is what's specific to a compartment is that it, it, uh, it gives you a new uh, global object. Uh, the fact that you can load that it has its own module graph also is kind of a consequence of that. But the most defining feature is that it has a new global uh, scope. Um, that, in my, go ahead. Yeah, in my in my opinion, what defines Realm is that it has a new set of intrinsics. Um, not that it uh, not not anything else. And for the agents, uh, the defining feature is that. Um, what is it? Execution. All execution is synchronous uh, inside an agent. Right. Like an agent. Yeah. Agents would not be able to communicate synchronously. I think. I think that might be the defining feature of it. Right. And and by extension, uh, and and whatever, and the consequence of that is that whatever reference that you can get your uh, hands on, uh, you can you can access the value, but if, if you have a callable vendor, that doesn't mean uh, you can you can reach uh, by value the objects in the other uh, in the other realms inside the agents. So uh, I think the defining feature really is uh, synchronous uh, access. Um, and if you apply those like global space, intrinsic space and sync space, it, you lose the relation between them now. Yeah, but and, the, and this thing actually has all three. Uh, as you were iterating that list, or excuse me, enumerating the qualities and characteristics right. in that list, I've realized this thing has all three of those, a fresh global object, new intrinsics, and async, excuse me, eh, eh, sorry, serious correction, sync. Uh, access um, through evaluate. Wait, right. you, you always inherit what your upper level has. So because you have sync access in, uh, in, in an agent, uh, realms and uh, compartments also have sync access. Because you have a new global uh, on, uh, in a realm, the compartment also, uh, actually, no, they share the global of the well, what about yeah. so realm and compartment share the sync environment of uh, the agents. Uh, compartment share the global of the the realm, and the global context is set, is different for every one of them. But each of them also is one of the under it. So an agent has a, a incubator realm, and an incubator realm has a start compartment. I think. We might be well served to draw a chart or diagram of, of this because we have we have this layering of, of of things which are all sort of vaguely compartment like, but each one uh, has has you know is isolates certain aspects of itself from its peers and shares um, certain stuff with them. That that it that is then governed by whatever the higher level thing is, and um, and and even though we're all kind of know all of this stuff, it's it we 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 kind of lose track of it in the course of discussion, and it would be nice to just have it pegged as a as I say like a diagram or something where we can point at it and and. Uh, um, you know, really ask the question, okay, what distinguishes this from this from this? And, and then perhaps derive some terminology from 
the distinction between the layers, uh, because it feels like we have a lot of very circular conversations here where because we're not keeping these distinctions in mind, we're kind of, you know, circling around ourselves a lot. What about environment with a capital E? As it has all three of those important characteristics. I think, I think this is overloaded uh, already. You know what? I mean, uh, I'll take apartment if that's the thing. I would get behind compartment, uh, but like, I'm also fully behind realm forever. <laughs> So there, there's a, uh, one of the suggestions also, John, uh, JDG also talked about it yesterday uh, at home. And uh, he sent a link there, there was a Wikipedia. Alex already answered like suggesting brain. But I, uh, there, like that Wikipedia article has uh, interesting uh, things to, uh, about it, like with the mat mathematical references. And at some point, it also leads to two other uh, words. They're mathematical uh, analog analogous to this. One of them is that what general suggests, like space, uh, as a mathemat mathematical space, but also um, this one I don't like, uh, a manifold. But uh, <laughs> On the, but uh, like in some sense, I want to like brain, but I, I, I agree with Alex in advance that like this will confuse, will be confusing with the main brains. As, yeah, as a native speaker of English, the only word I know brain from is membrane. Brain spelled like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think once again, we keep getting stuck on, we have a whole bunch of words which are synonyms for a, a container or compartment or or environment or whatever and they're all kind of interchangeable in some sense whereas what we're trying to do is capture the distinction between uh different kinds of you know different different members of this species of thing or different levels in this hierarchy and yes. we should be focusing on uh, focusing trying to find uh, language which emphasizes the distinction between the layers as opposed to what any one of these layers is in isolation because if you take them in isolation the same word will work equally well for any of them right so we're we're looking for a taxonomy um yes i, I yeah i think we should really try to find words that capture the difference between those three uh entities first and then uh and then see if there's a taxonomy that could apply. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's likely that as you suggest, we just need a word that, it, that implies a region that has a boundary. Um, it's any of the words that are a region that has a boundary and then maybe find adjectives uh, to, to prefix uh, that make the distinction clear. Yeah, but I don't know what those prefixes are. Yeah, uh, so um in this diagram using arbitrary names made up for the purposes of, of having a diagram um everything inside of a realm communicates synchronously um everything, everything outside of the realm, thread communicates synchronously uh can it well okay so let's let's put it this way everything within a realm has a single event loop that, that they share. So, so, so there, are, there are distinctions, like do we have shared intrinsics? Do we have a shared event loop? Um, and having a shared event loop means communicating synchronously. Uh, do they have shared memory, right? Like can a shared array buffer be shared between, uh, between things that are within that, within that boundary? Um, and- uh, Doomably in the future with endowments that will be possible, right? Will it share like transfer share? Um, what? Or is it? Or is endowments just 
by reference. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Well, regardless, they, 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 they would they would be in a shared memory. Yeah, realm realms would would still be within a shared memory, even with especially with endowments. Right. They would, you don't need to resort to asynchronous message passing for communication, um, as you do. A, as like somewhere between thread and process and JavaScript kind of makes this messy because workers are used for both of those terms um, uh, or isolates and, and, and such. I mean, to, to be clear, realms, callable realms today are already shared memory because you have uh, function references. So yes, yeah. Um, yeah, it is certainly conceivable that a shared array buffer could be shared directly between two realms they might have two inst they would have distinct instances of the of, of the shared array buffer but they would be views into the same memory and that's what i mean by shared memory um daniel i see daniel's hand uh anybody who's yeah. unable to post their hand uh feel free to just say you you want a place in the conversation in in chat and we'll make a space for you Daniel. Oh, by the way, I recently learned how to raise your hand in the new version of Zoom, and it's you click on reactions, and then you click raise hand on the thing that pops up, which I didn't know. Anyway, uh, so what do people think about space? I mean, I feel like that could lend itself to this hierarchy where we could put words on the front of it. I think. I think. And... I, I think that uh, to Chip's point, space, realm, compartment. Um, verse all are words that could fit in that position and space is this environment they're all good uh, or boundary or <laughs> any of them um are, are equally suitable for that role uh could we because realm has sort of all three things as as mateo um you know mentioned would it be reasonable to call a realm just a space and then the other ones would be sort of qualified. So like a module space and a async space, for example. Actually, uh, yeah, for example, I don't know. I don't know if I completely buy those exact examples, but yeah, something like that. I actually do like the boundary more than space because it, it, it gives where uh, the, the limit is. And so if you apply it with the prefixes, I think it actually works. Where my problem, if you apply the prefix to something like space or environment, it doesn't uh, capture the, the, the limits. So uh, at that point, a synchronous boundary for agent, an object boundary for a uh, realm, and a global boundary uh, for compartment somewhat works. So uh, I, I, I find the term boundary very confusing because it doesn't describe what the thing is. We're, we're creating a new global object. We're creating a new place where objects can be used. It has a boundary, but it isn't a boundary. For me, it means whatever is in it is, is that specific thing. Um, so synchronous binary, everything inside that binary is going to be synchronous. Uh, object binary, all the objects inside that binary are going to be uh, related. And uh, global boundary, every, and maybe we can find something else in global because it's very overloaded, but uh, all the um, the context in there, or yeah, context, context boundary, I don't know. Um, <laughs> the compartment one is a little bit iffy, but it, I'd like to find something that captures that everything inside the compartment is, um, is in the same uh, global context. Uh, on the space thing, I, I take this part of still from the brain uh, Wikipedia page on saying the, on the objects being the mathematical structures so that, such as sets, vectors, spaces, topological spaces. Uh, that's one of the things that I would actually like support uh, usage, renaming it to space. Uh, in terms of like you, you get a new space for uh, the, the objects that you describe, like a new space for intrinsics, etc. I'm probably going a bit vague on this, not super technical, but I wouldn't mind using space. But of course, we would have weird. <laughs> 
connotations for that, like from from community, like why we have we name something space, but I don't so, mind. So, so we could we could rationalize space using a taxonomy um, from an astronomical metaphor, especially since we have globe as in global system is already something that we've thought about using as a name in JavaScript um, for module system, actually. Uh, that's not good. We, we, uh, well, we've, made, I'm, we had this long discussion about the, the system global, which has a whole bunch of other baggage associated with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, when I think about the word space, I think if that's supposed to mean outer space, then I don't know what it means to, to make a new space. I meant space more like, well, there's, I don't know, there's a bunch of stuff in this room and I'm gonna make a space over here and a space over there. And those are two right. places that I can, you know, operate in. You said room, which makes me think taxonomically, room, house, neighborhood. Um. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. So somebody shut down Sandbox, but, um as its own might be a problem, but if we if we qualify it, would it make more sense then? Object sandbox. Uh, sandbox kind of connotes a a much stronger degree of isolation, uh, which ultimately uh, it's our objective to achieve. Um, but I'm not sure that any of these on their own achieve it. I mean, if you, if you qualify it like object sandbox, we are guaranteeing that your objects are not leaving that sandbox. There's a, so so um, we've we've talked about naming this after the thing that it encloses. Uh, we haven't talked about naming after what can pierce the boundary. Um, so uh, let's so suppose that we uh, suppose that we take an old idea of callable boundary. And we keep boundary, and callable denotes what can pierce the what can pierce the boundary. And then, if we named systematically around that idea, it would be a message boundary, a callable boundary, and I guess object boundary uh, or uh, hmm. module graph, like gra module graph boundary. I don't know. I what think if, if we want to name things after boundaries, then I would really rather call it a primitive boundary rather than a callable boundary, because fundamentally the 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 realm proposal is about only letting primitives through the realms, and then it also allows callables when they're wrapped to only allow primitives through recursively. So callable boundary always felt a little bit odd to me for that reason. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have a better name to propose. Yes. But it's one thing if we call it callable boundary, like in our own docs, and it's another thing if it gets baked into like all the code using it. Mm -hmm. so boundary, of, primitive boundary. I, I, if I, we I, go through the road of boundary uh, of callable boundary, is there any problem just calling it boundary? Uh, that that fails in Chip's criterion that it should be something that. Um, that the name should not be something that could be arbitrarily applied to any of these concepts. Uh, yeah. Chip, you tried to get a word in edgewise. Yeah, the, the, the word primitive is, is, is troublesome because it's both a, we, we use it both as an adjective and as a noun. Um, and when somebody says primitive boundary, they're using it in the noun sense with the noun being turned into an adjective. And so it's ambiguous as to whether you're talking about a boundary which is itself primitive or a boundary which separates primitives from each other. And, um, and, and, and I, I just don't think there's any clean way out of that. Uh, Dan, I still see your hand is up. I don't, I don't, I assume you're not uh, yeah. Okay, well, um, we have, 
I, I want to reserve some time off the record in five minutes. And I know that uh, Daniel had hoped to reserve 15 to talk about web integration. Uh, let's, let's give that five. Sounds good. Okay, yeah, I'm fine with reducing the amount of time to five. So for, for realms to be shippable in browsers, which is a, which is a goal of this group, we need to decide which globals are added to the realm global. So we decided that the <clears throat> that hosts should be able to add globals, but on the web, they're gonna add a reduced set of globals. And in particular, we want the web to add globals that have less power. So the most important thing, which we already have accomplished in the current draft spec is that all the globals have to be configurable. <clears throat> then on, on top of that, I think we should only add globals that are kind of powerless. So I want to set out in the HTML integration kind of a clear criterion that we'll use for decision making, which I think should be something like realms only have globals that do calculation, not input and output. And then, and then the next step will be to annotate all the different web specifications to say which ones are exposed on realms. So uh, I want to recap the position from the from the perspective of the lockdown proposal is that uh, that we do not we, that that having a configurable global is sufficient for the needs of anybody constructing a locked down environment, um, and that if if realms are created with powerful mechanisms to communicate amongst themselves or others. Um, yeah, the configurability is sufficient in order to reduce their power down to a locked down equivalent. Um, and, and that I don't think that we need to impose a stronger constraint than that. It may be desirable or nice uh, or, or less foot gunny to reduce the scope, but just my two cents are that it's not necessary for it to be reduced. Okay, that's good to have established. I think that means that the current specification, which doesn't specify anything more than configurability is sufficient on the JavaScript side. Yes. For the web, we still need to specify the exact set. And I think the guideline that I mentioned, even though power, I think that what, what you just said, Chris, means that we don't really have to define power very properly. It's okay if we're just kind of fuzzy and case by case about it because lockdown doesn't need to depend on, on the powerlessness. Is that that's, something you'd kind of agree with? That's correct, yeah. Okay, great. So uh, the, the mechanism for this will be that in, in web ideal, we'll add a like exposed equals realm thing analogous to exposed equals window or exposed equals worker. And uh, yeah, Salesforce has been sponsoring Egalia's work on, on realms in general and now on realm HTML integration with, with this stuff. Hopefully soon we'll be working on, on browser implementation as well. And uh, yeah, I don't know if people here are interested in being involved more in the HTML integration or if we should just kind of handle it and ping you when everything's ready. What do, what do people think? Is I'm trying to understand, is there a reason you want to restrict uh, what's available on a realm and not inherit anything that was um, from the incubator realm? So if you were in a window, you get all the globals of the window, but as configurable. If you were in a worker and you create a realm, you get all the globals of uh, the worker, uh, but make sure they are configurable. Um, my, my understanding is that one of the use cases uh, uh, is uh, test suites. It should be being able to, uh, to, to create an environment so that uh, you can run a test in it and then uh, tear it down. Um, and if that environment doesn't have, doesn't replicate the uh, incubator, uh, you, those, those use cases will run into uh, heavy complications. Uh, I imagine that test suites could make things work by using a membrane, couldn't That's they? That's not true. No? Uh, not, not, not for everything. If you don't have fetch in it and you can't, uh, like the performance of, uh, of, of array buffers and things like that uh, is, is, is going to be extremely complicated. 
uh, you can do post message uh, through a membrane either. Um, or a, because you don't have access to uh, structured cloning. So, I mean, it, 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 it would be a huge nightmare to do it through a, through a membrane. Yeah, I can see how those things would be nightmares. Uh, I'm still a little skeptical of just giving everything. I think I'll, ha I'll have to think about it some more. Um, I feel like we're going to run into problems if we just put everything there. But yeah. I'm not sure exactly what the problems are. Maybe maybe it's just because we've been talking about a reduce set for so long that it's stuck in my head that way. It's uh, it, I, I I think that having it being a, a express a expressly marking things that are that are that can be shared with a realm or can or or have um, that are constructed with a default realm is good. And it gives us an opportunity. It would give the web folk an opportunity to ex explicitly think about the, uh, the problems case by case, which is good, especially because some of those things like location, um, uh, if, 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 we, if, it's, if it's just do whatever you're doing for your existing realm, that's clearly going to run into cases where um, the configurability constraint might not be reviewed. Um, and some of these things I imagine are not possible to emulate well, um, well with the I, I, requirement. The, the cases that the cases that were given a fetch and post message are like the most IO kind of cases I could think of. Yes. Uh, so yes. it, yeah. you know we could, you know, we could we could uh, expose lots and lots of things to realms with an eye towards just excluding things that have these configurability issues like window.top. And uh, the other thing is that I don't know if specs are all written to make it so that it's OK if it has another copy of things. I mean, some specs are. When they use WebIDL, it should, should be OK. But other specs, like streams, at least historically, I don't know the current state, I think do more of like holding state in particular objects mm -hmm. and would would have trouble just randomly cloning themselves yes so uh yeah i'm i'm in favor of doing a careful review and expressly marking anything that that should be in every realm yeah. I, I think that's well, fine I, I would i would suggest um that instead of doing an expose uh, window expose worker uh and expose realm equivalent you had it as a flag, uh, like allowed uh, in sub realms or something like that. Um, be, for cases where you have an API uh, that might be only on a window and not in a worker, but you want to allow on a realm that's created by a window, but not created by uh, in a realm that's created by a worker. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about. Yeah, if the... we want to allow realms to do IO in this way, then yeah, I agree that this would be better as a separate extended attribute. But I think probably in a future SES meeting, we should talk more about the criteria for which things are exposed in realms, because I was, I just had it in my head for a really long time that we would omit these things. I guess we're, we're disagreeing and we should come to a conclusion. And then we, then based on that, we can do all this spec logic. Yeah. Um, so, uh, th there is one, uh, a note about this, uh, I, 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 at least from uh, what I understand from my use case, what I want for realms, I we currently just have the constraint. So uh, the, the new global days of realms being an ordinary object and uh, all the properties being added there, they're always gonna be configurable. Uh, that help us uh, doing configuration that we need. So having a yo, it's not recommended, but it still can be avoided after configuration. So this is a constraint that we have, and it's set in ECMAScript. So uh, so far, I am fine and not worried too much. Uh, anything after that is more like a, an assumption that I'm making. Um, the more that we have. Um, results in more configuration that we need in uh, when we set a new realm. 
um, to give a perspective for everyone. We have like a very large usage of realms uh, even today, and we're uh, expanding that to e even much, much more. And that means uh, like one of the problems today is that like the iframes are overloaded with everything. And there is a big configuration of iterating over everything from coming from uh, the iframes and deleting uh, everything because we're going to be replacing, creating the virtualization on top. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And that, that, that makes it like a, a huge load of configuration. So my assumption, if we have much more, at some point, this might become, uh, this might take a toll on uh, memory performance or whatever. Yeah, but sure. it's assumption. It's assumption. It's too early to talk about it. It's like, I cannot measure uh, that. I can only imagine like if we have like thousands of methods to delete, and remove and iterate over them. But quick question. I thought any of these type of system usually just have an allow list and anything that's not on there, uh, it gets removed. So uh, is, is the concern that more things need to be added to the allow list over time uh, or? No, no, the concern is that the initialization weight, the amount of, the amount of time and memory that each new realm consumes could grow unbounded. Um, so so let, let, me, let me take as a bit of an example of what's around the corner is that if we add a, a worker API to the language, um, then uh, what will, it will, it is clearly impossible to construct a membrane between workers out of anything except asynchronous message passing. Um, and it would be impractical for something like the fetch API to be shunted through the root process of every, of every process tree. There has to be, um, there has to be a mechanism for endowing IO capabilities to your child process um, so that it doesn't have to route all of its messages through you for performance reasons, if nothing else. Um, and I think that that's going to establish a precedent for having an options bag that says any IO capability granted to a worker at least would have to be expressly granted and have and each of those would have an impact on the startup time for example having access to the shared having access to a dom um, itself is even something that is optional um, for a child process and extremely expensive in the cases where considerably expensive in the cases where it's actually needed um, it, it sounds like this is a future work where the realm or a worker or whatever we're creating or commitment we're creating well uh, doesn't have all the, uh, the, the default globals. Uh, but in the meantime, you can just leave all the defaults in there. Yeah, and I like your idea of flags actually as, and maybe even uh, maybe Daniel, maybe even in a first pass, we do not not as a principle going forward, but as a first pass that realms constructed without any options receive no IO capabilities. That I think is a reason, very reasonable principle. Uh, so recommending that creating a new realm doesn't have any IO capabilities. Yeah, and like with if creating a new realm with no options. Would would confer no I/O capabilities, and then if we want, if if a if a if a uh, a realm on the web needed I/O capabilities, having them be flagged um, seems totally reasonable. To flagged in the constructor options bag. There is there is no mechanism to pass options in yes. the constructor, so you can't. <laughs> yes, not. I, I don't think so this would be a follow-on yeah. proposal. Right. It would be yeah. like we would be kind of throwing the testing use case that you're talking about under the bus initially, and then maybe doing it later. Because there's there's a ton of different things that we're doing later. For example, the whole loader API, which we all agree is important. Yeah. Even though wow. we, we know that we want it, we're not, we're going step by step. Uh, we're at time. I, I'm going to stop the recording and I'm hoping, oh no, Rick has, oh, anyhow. Uh, that's that's a meeting then. Um, thanks for coming. Thank you all.